Hello, dear friends, and welcome. Welcome to this new series of videos uh, linked to chapters in a new book, The Coastal Atlas of Ireland. Very thick book. Yeah, if you um, can't make to the gym, you can just lift it 10 times and you do with your exercise for the day. So, the idea of this book came about uh, eight years ago, uh, actually originated from this YouTube channel, The Geo Coast. At the time I was making videos about coastal geology and geomorphology of Ireland to support my lectures at UCC. And then I thought, why not to make a book about the coast of Ireland? As a Russian writer in 1930s, say Mikhail Bulgakov, his name, he said, manuscripts don't burn. So I thought like, well, a virus can destroy any online contents, but the book might stay there for future generations. So myself and Robert DeVoy started working on this idea and then more people got involved in editing the paper version of the book. So there was no need for me. And I focused on creating live content videos, which are thematically linked to chapters and case studies in the Atlas. In doing so, I have interviewed people who wrote the chapters or the case studies and um, just other people who have something relevant to say about the themes covered in the Atlas. So, this is a live product. Please do check back as you're reading through the book as new videos will be added. And as other activities of the GeoCoast uh, YouTube channel, uh, this the creation of these videos was kindly supported by the Informa program of the Irish government, uh, co-managed by the Geological Survey of Ireland and the Marine Institute. So special thanks goes to them for that. And now uh, I give the opportunity to people who uh, been working on the paper version of the book to say about their experience um, and uh, express their views on this product. So for now, goodbye and hope you enjoy both reading and watching the videos. Well, I'm Robert Devoy uh, and I'm still the physical professor of physical geography in UCC uh, in uh, University in Cork. And my background is particularly as a physical geographer and working on coastlines in terms of coastal science and all of the linkages of coastal science to uh, the, the Earth's environment. And this uh, project really started with Max and myself uh, in terms of outlining how we would see Irish coasts and the need for an interpretation of the Irish coastline. So as I said, um, my linkage is really in terms of the starting up of the atlas and, and subsequent development. And the concept is really because I'm passionate about coasts. I feel uh, coastal environments are so important in Ireland, uh, but also globally. And they are places where the bulk of the world's population is now living. And it's experiencing so many stresses because of that concentration of people, and because of the environmental stresses from climate change, uh, that are very evident in today's world and no more so than in Ireland. And so Ireland is a great place to talk about coasts and their problems, their issues, their spectacular scenery and the way in which we use coasts for leisure and we enjoy them. Uh, human populations really began their existence on coastlines and estuaries and so it's the place where for many many years since I was born as it were uh, I think coasts have, have occupied my mind. For Ireland, uh, the, the importance of coasts is self-evident in that our major cities, Cork, where we are standing now and, and talking about this, this atlas, but Dublin, Wexford, Galway, uh, Coleraine, Derry, uh, so many parts of the major towns and cities of, of Ireland are coastal. And therein, of course, is the immediate attraction for people. And, of course, the problems of getting into and out of coasts from the seaward side with the ships, from the landward side with so much of the transport. Uh, wherever we think about it, coasts occupy ways of, of um, how we live, thinking about the ways in which we live. So the atlas is, from my view, 
trying to link the physical environment and the things that I'm particularly occupied with in terms of the waves, the storms, the way in which the beaches and the coasts change, the sand dunes change, the cliffs change through time and giving a time perspective to the physical coast and then moving on really to bring in all of those social and human dimensions into that physical background and from there perhaps to look on into the future and what the coasts will hold for us as we experience climate change in its reality, as we experience other parts of environmental stressing, and we experience the ways in which the coasts are so dramatically changing with harbour works, with uh, new buildings, uh, with changes to the way in which we are using them. And all of those changes are part of today's life. So bringing that atlas production into the contemporary period and also then on into the future. My name is Barry Brunt. I'm a lecturer at UCC in Cork and have long been interested in studying development. And in particular, of course, being an island economy, this study has involved development of Ireland's coastal zone. And in particular, how trade and industrial development has gravitated increasingly to Ireland's coastal littoral. The Coastal Atlas of Ireland is an exciting project which tries to highlight the multiplicity of development aspects, heritage, physical landscape, climate. In fact, it's a compendium of how Ireland's coastline has evolved from beginnings of time to the contemporary phase and even offering some prospects for the future. It is a project, I think, which will expose for many people a multiplicity of elements that they had never really thought about and also provides some interesting examples to other countries of how coastal area development should be managed or not, as the case may be. In the chapter, I am interested primarily in coastal development in the contemporary phase. And of course, coastal development has long been a feature of Ireland's um, development aspect. But my area of interest is primarily from the 1960s, when the Republic of Ireland, as well as Northern Ireland, experienced significant changes. And as a coastal and as an island economy, of course, trade has long been a central element of the development of the countries. So my principal chapter looks at trade, particularly in the 20th century, and how an export-oriented economy has found expression in, firstly, the changing scale and layout of ports, and secondly, in terms of how Urbanization in Ireland has concentrated increasingly along the coastline to the extent that now over 40% of the country's population lives within one kilometre of the coast. And this, of course, has many implications for the environment and for standard of living and the quality of life on the island of Ireland. The Atlas has, I think, a wide range of potential readers, from those interested in perhaps looking at historical events, heritage of the country, the wonderful and diverse physical landscapes which one finds around the coast of Ireland, as well as appreciating some of the implications of growth through tourism, through urbanization, through industrial development and how these implications have important ramifications for the environment of the country. Uh, well, I'm, I'm Darius Bartlett. Uh, my background is in physical geography and uh, earth sciences. For about 30 years, I've been teaching uh, at UCC in Cork, uh, teaching both physical geography and also the application of computers and 
computer information systems, uh, which led to my specialism in coastal applications of these technologies. In 1986, which was long before the internet, I was involved in a research project in Coleraine, which involved mapping the uh, coast of Antrim and looking at um, erosion on the coast. And that got me interested in the challenges of applying computer technology to coastal issues. For me, the Atlas represents many things. I'm delighted that it gives a chance to tell the stories of the coast. There are many different stories that the coastline can tell us. Uh, it can tell us about the history, it can tell us about the physical environment, tell us about the natural environment. There's also the human uses of the coast. There are the uh, perceptions and understandings of the coast, all of which we're trying to incorporate into the atlas. And computer technologies in various forms are helping us to do this, particularly in making the maps and the graphics that are uh, at the heart of the atlas. I, th I think the atlas should be of interest to a wide variety of readers, uh, ranging from uh, scholars and school children through to visitors to Ireland, people who maybe hope to come to Ireland sometime but have not yet been here, and of course people who live already uh, in various parts of the island. People who perhaps spend time on the coast but have not really thought about the uh, various aspects and different uh, elements of the coast that they are aware of. For me, one of the joys I have had in making it uh, in visiting the coast uh, almost every day I visit the coast with my dogs and I like walking the beaches with my dog and I've seen the co um, how the beaches and the coast changes on a day-to-day -day basis and my eyes have been opened up to the variety of things and stories that this coastline can tell and hopefully the atlas will do likewise. It will open people's eyes to the range of perspectives that we can have on the coast. My name is Sarah Kandrosh and I'm a co-editor and cartographer on Shoreline's The Coastal Atlas of Ireland. I got involved in the project towards the end of my PhD at UCC, which was looking at the impacts of sea level rise on Ireland's coast. And I've been working on the project ever since. I've worked with hundreds of authors at this stage um, on hundreds of maps uh, and graphics. Um, and I suppose we're working with we're working towards a vision of creating um, a celebration of the Irish coast. Um, so we're working with a diverse range of experts, people from biologists to archaeologists to historians to geographers, to try to create a, an all-encompassing compendium of, of the Irish coast. And one of the difficulties that we have is because we're working um, to create an all-island publication, we've got to combine data sets from Northern Ireland with the Republic, and sometimes this can be quite difficult, difficult. Um, when data is collected maybe in a slightly different way or from slightly different years. So to try to merge all of this data together to create uh, a full picture has been somewhat of a challenge. Um, but since we're working with um, some of the, the top experts in their fields, we've been able to collect and collate um, lots of data sets and display them, uh, some of them for the very first time.